So welcome to the PMP Life Center series. We have scope management. So scope management deals with, of course, managing the work to be performed for, for the project, right? So that's what we're trying to do is we have work to be done for the project and our goal, our goal is to deliver the project on time within budget and to the customer satisfaction so that we can't forget that part is that what we're trying to do is stay on target, right? Scope management is in the knowledge area, scope management, right? Scope management is the knowledge area. What about the, when we talk about control scope, control scope, where are we? Which, which process group are we in? So control scope is in the monitoring and control process group the monitoring and control process group. So orientation, control scope is in soap management and the control scope is in the process called monitoring and control. So of course we always wanna be aware of where we are and this awareness is gonna make a difference down the road. All right, here we go. Let's talk about the agenda as, some, as most of you know by now. You get one PDU, one professional development unit, for attending the session today, for listening to the recording from PMI, from PMI, the Project Management Institute. So you get one PDU. If you already have PMP, you, this is one of your 60, six zero. If you are working towards the PMP, like some of, you, some of you might be doing that, then you need 35. This is one of the 35, and we're making good progress. I think this is session 12, so you're not far away from that. So we'll talk about, give you a little welcome, talk to you about what the session is about, and the focus is on how to pass the PMP exam, right? How do we pass the PMP exam? What do we have to know? It's not just the content now. It's also knowing how to take an exam. Key terms, key terms are also valuable. And I've got a couple of questions that I wrote for you that are hard. I think you'll enjoy them. Let's get going, all right? All right, so definition first, control scope. Okay, so which knowledge area are we in? Knowledge area, control scope. If you said scope management, you are correct. We are in the scope management knowledge area. Which process group are we in? Process group. Okay, if you said we are in monitoring and controlling, you are correct. So the definition is control scope is the process of monitoring the status of project and project, uh, product scope and also managing the scope baseline. So here's something important now. There is a difference between project scope and product scope. Project scope deals with what does it take to do the work right? How, what does it take to do the work at all? But of course, we're looking to be on time, within budget, and to meet the scope requirements. So project scope is all the work. Product scope Product scope is what do we have left when we're done. So when we're done with all the work, what does it look like? Many times people say product scope is the tangible. What can we touch? What does it look like? Make sure you know the difference between project scope and product scope. So the key benefit of this process, which is called control scope, is that it allows the scope baseline to be maintained throughout the project. So we know that we have a baseline of the work to be performed, and control scope says we will maintain that baseline along the way. Hard to do? Of course it is. But that's our job as a project manager. All right, scope baseline. Definitions. Now we got three definitions here. 
And I think they're very important because if you know them, you will do pretty well or you'll do well in this section. But really, a lot of these terms apply to other sections. Scope, baseline. Remember, scope is the work to be performed, right? The scope baseline is compared to actual results to determine if a change, corrective action, or preventive action is necessary. So we have a baseline. The baseline says, hey, how much work are we going to do? Now, if we're not meeting that baseline for whatever reason, we take or we have a change, corrective action, or we are proactive with a preventive action. So know what a scope baseline is, how much work are we going to do? If the customer wants us to do more work, that's called scope creep. Remember that one, right? I'm sure you remember that, remember that from an earlier discussion. Okay, configuration management plan. The plan defines those items that are configurable, those items that require formal change control and the process for controlling changes to such items. So if we make a change of some kind, who is keeping up with that? Who knows what the change is? Was the change accepted? Was the change implemented? Was the change effective? This means or this is configuration management plan. There's a plan to track changes along the way. Very important. Remember, the plan is the configuration management plan. It's how are we going to do it. There's also something called the RTM, the Requirements Traceability Matrix. The RTM will actually track the change from beginning to end and will determine if there is value from the change. So the plan, see the configuration method plan, will tell us how. The RTM will tell us if we did it. Very important concept. Okay, work performance data can include the number of change requests received, the number of requests accepted, and the number of deliverables completed, and so on. So work performance data we can only have it beginning with executing because at this point, now we know how many change requests, how many deliverables, and so on. If we don't have the data, we can't make decisions. Remember, you cannot manage something that you don't measure. Data is about measuring. I hope that makes sense because it's really important now. Okay. Question number one, the aviation project is an overall CPI of 1.2 and CPI of 0.82. The customer is informed that the project is under budget but behind schedule. So I kind of made this a little tricky here when I wrote this one. Know that when I said CPI 1.2, that made it under budget. When I said SPI of 0.82, that made it behind schedule. So all I'm doing here and all PMI would do is try to trick you and tell you more stuff that really doesn't matter, right? To determine viable options to get the project on schedule, key project team members plan to review the following items provided by the customer. Quality specifications for equipment and the need for an integrative technology system. Okay, that's a tough question. I can tell you it's tough, all right? Which of the following plans is of most use to the project team? So all of a sudden, you're reading this question, you go CPI, SPI, team members, all kinds of stuff, but then there's a question. There's a stem of the question. Which of the following plans is of the most used to the project team. So if you look at the list of plans, scope baseline, change management plan, configuration management plan, requirements management plan, well, guess what? They are all part of the plan. 
go baseline. Don't get turned off by that one now. It's not the right answer now, but go baseline is part of the project management plan. It's just not the answer. So let's go baseline. We talked about it later, earlier, but just be aware you're looking for a plan. Now, what's going on here? So we really are looking for something that tells us about what the customer wants. Quality specifications for equipment and the need for an integrative technology systems system. Which one tells us that? So baseline? Change management? Well, we, are, we already know school baseline is not the answer. Change management plan? Well, we're not really talking about changes right now. We're just talking about what the customer wants. Configuration management plan? Well, we're not talking about tracking stuff, right? We're just talking about what the customer wants. So get what the answer is. The requirements management plan. So let's go back to it real quick. All right, why is it the requirements management plan? Oops, we'll go back to it. What happened here? So the answer is the requirements management plan. Why? Let me get my marker here. This is the answer. Because it's what the customer requested. They wanted an integrative technology system. This is a tough question because some people are going to pick scope baseline thinking it's the only one that doesn't have the word plan. That's incorrect now. So we're looking for something that defines the answer. So or that explains the answer. Scope baseline, even though it's it doesn't have the word plan, right? It doesn't have the word plan, it's still part of the project management plan. It's something you really have to know now because otherwise it'll trick you on the exam. So the change management plan, we're not talking about that. We're talking about quality specifications for equipment and an integrative technology system. Well, we're talking about what we discussed with the customer. If we know what we discussed with the customer, then we should be in pretty good shape because these are the requirements. So the required management plan is a component of the project management plan, which we knew that. And it describes how the project requirements will be analyzed, documented, and managed. Why do I think it's a tough question? Number one, because scope baseline, scope baseline sounded like a good answer, given it did not have the word plan. Okay, so read through that. Hopefully that's helpful to you. I know it can be tricky, but that's what these exams are like. Very, very tricky. Okay, question number two. Let's see if I can magnify this a little bit. Okay, so after a recent, recent meeting with the customer, it has become apparent that a change request is necessary because there's a need to include the capability to allow remote workers to access additional servers. The customer reinforced the importance of security. All right, so, so what do we have here? We have... We had a meeting with the customer. It became apparent that a change was needed. Why? Because of the capability to allow people who are working from away from the office to connect, pretty much, right? So now here comes the stem. There's the stem. Because of this change request, all right, what should the project manager do first? This is so important. First, okay, at first, know that, study this. What should we do first? Okay, don't forget that. A, deny the request because it was not included in the scope baseline. Obviously, that's not the answer. We don't deny requests, okay? That's not our job. Our job is not to deny stuff. B, proceed to the form integrated change control process. Okay, but at least we know we can continue. So let's take that one for a minute. Update the project management plan to accommodate the change. Well, this is where the project manager takes a unilateral decision, and that's wrong. We should not just say, hey, we'll do that. So that's wrong. The informed change manager to make update as soon as possible. Guess what? Unilateral. 
So let me change markers here real quick. Um, C, it means do something right away. That's wrong. D means do something right away. So the answer falls between A and B. Well, we already know that D, I'm sorry, that A is not the answer because we're not going to just deny the request. For number one, that doesn't sound right. Number two, it's wrong because we don't go through a process. There is a process called perform integrated change control, and guess what? We have to follow that. We have to follow that process. That's the answer. Perform integrated change control. It's in the head box. Project management body of knowledge. We follow the process. The best answer is where the customer follows the perform or the formal change control process. Look at that word here. Formal. We cannot make unilateral decisions. Get, get away from that on the exam now because it's going to make you get the wrong answer. Please note that changes are managed through the perform integrate change control process and avoid any answers where the project manager makes a what? Unilateral decision. We want to get away from that every time. I hope that's helpful now because Gosh, I wish I, I knew all this stuff when I took the exam. It's just not easy. Okay. Questions, answers. I'm the only one here, so you guys need to email me, call me, whatever you want to do. Email is a good way to start. And remember, everyone gets a one PDU. PDU. One PDU. For attending, either if you're a PMP or if you're trying to get your PMP. Okay? All right, well, then I will see you next week, and we'll get a date, and hopefully other people can come and attend and give me some feedback. Okay, good night.